My name is Paul Crows, and I'm the Instrument Specialist for Levitt Safety. Our purpose for producing this short video is to introduce the GasTech Hazmat Kit. The GasTech Hazmat Kit is designed to provide hazard information quickly in emergency situations. Chemical accidents require a fast assessment of the airborne concentration level for a quick safety evaluation of the area. Usually the chemical hazard is known, which merely requires the use of one detector tube to obtain the concentration level. In situations where the contaminant is unknown, the decision chart can be used to determine what unknown chemicals are present. Unlike electronic gas detectors, gas tech tubes do not require calibration and can be stored on a shelf or in a vehicle until ready for use. In this video, we'll be looking at using gas tech tubes in a hazmat context to determine what kind of gases are present and at what concentrations. The gas tech hazmat kit includes a rugged case, a precision pump, an extension hose for dealing with vertical spaces, and a selection of gas tech tubes, and a decision chart that enables you to use the tubes to identify what's in the air and to try to quantify it. The gas tech tube kit has several advantages over electronic instruments. Unlike electronic gas detectors, gas tech tubes do not require calibration and can be stored on a shelf or in a vehicle until ready for use. As long as the shelf life of the box of tubes is not exceeded, the tubes are ready for use. Portable gas detectors measure a limited selection of inorganic gases such as oxygen, carbon monoxide, hydrogen sulfide. Organic gases such as solvents, thinners and fuels cannot easily be detected by other portable instruments. By using a decision tree, we can use the tubes to identify what kind of gas is present and whether the concentrations present are a hazard and whether appropriate personal protective equipment needs to be worn. By using the hazmat tubes in a specific order, we can differentiate between different classes of hydrocarbons such as benzene, thinners such as toluene, xylene and naphtha, propane and butane, longer straight chain hydrocarbons such as hexane and octane, petroleum distillates and other aromatic and aliphatic compounds. We can also detect and quantify a number of inorganics such as carbon monoxide, hydrogen sulfide, chlorine, bromine, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, hydrogen cyanide and basic compounds such as ammonia, hydrazine and other amines. The hazmat kit can also be augmented with other colorimetric tubes to expand the possible number of compounds that can be measured. So let's take a look at how this works. To do this, we'll present an ammonia scenario. In this bag, we have some ammonia gas. We'll we use the tubes to sample from the bag and following the decision chart and see if we can identify both the gas and estimate its concentration. According to the decision chart, we will need to start with a Polytech number 107 tube. Before taking any measurements, with the tubes, we want to do a leak check, making sure that there are no leaks and that the pump is going to draw in exactly 100 mils of air through the tube. Inserting the tube without breaking the tip, we should have a perfect seal. Pulling back on the piston and letting it lock for 15 seconds, we can then release the piston and the vacuum should force it back to its starting position. If the handle only goes part way, and the pump is leaking and will need to be serviced. So next we will score and then break the tube on both ends. And insert the tube with the letter G facing the pump. We'll also connect the other end of the tube to the bag with the ammonia gas. With the tube now ready to take a sample, we again pull back on the piston until it locks. The vacuum will pull the air through the bag, up into the tube matrix and into the pump. Once the vacuum is dissipated and 100 mils of air have been pulled from the bag, the finish indicator will tell us that the sampling is complete and that we can check the stain length on the tube. In fact, with this Polytech tube, we do this operation three times.
In this case, there's no stain on the tube and the decision chart gives us two possibilities. The 8LA chlorine tube is used to look for the halogens as well as nitrogen dioxide and the 12L hydrogen cyanide tube is used to look for hydrogen cyanide, sulfur dioxide and basic compounds such as ammonia. Using the same procedure, we see here that there is no indication on the chlorine tube. However, there is a response on the 12L hydrogen cyanide tube. At this point, we have narrowed down the unknown to hydrogen cyanide, sulfur dioxide, or a basic compound such as ammonia. In order to differentiate between the three possibilities, we begin with the 3L ammonia tube. Again, we insert the tube and begin to see the coloration of the tube once we draw a sample. So I'll insert the tube, connect it to my gas. Again, we insert the tube and we begin to see the coloration of the tube caused by the ammonia in the sampling bag. At this point, we have identified the presence of ammonia and we have quantified that the concentration is around 10 parts per million. To equate this to a real life scenario, most people would have been able to detect the distinctive ammonia odor. However, the concentration would have been unknown and thus a decision on whether PPE is required would be difficult to make. The whole process could also have been speeded up if ammonia was directly suspected, either by smell or by other facts. The ammonia tube could have been used immediately with the same results. We have shown an example where we were able to both identify and quantify a gas that would not have been typically be identified using a standard 4-gas compliance gas monitor. The hazmat kit allows for the identification and quantification of 13 different classes of gases. Depending on a hazard assessment of a given area, the kit can be supplemented with additional tubes for specific hazards. The GasTech tube system includes a wide variety of tubes that can measure and quantify over 320 different chemical airborne hazards. <laughs> <laughs>